بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہیلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر 15 آف ڈیفرینشیل جیومیٹری لاسٹ لیکچر میں ہم نے فرینے آپریٹرز کیا تھا فار این آربیٹری سپیڈ کرو اس کے بعد ہم نے جو فارمولاز ڈیرائیو کیے تھے آربیٹری سپیڈ کرو اس کے لیے اس کو ہم نے امپلیمنٹ کیا تھا ان کمپیوٹنگ دے فرینے فریم ٹوشن کرویچر یونٹ ٹینجن ویکٹر یونٹ نارمل ویکٹر یونٹ بائی نارمل ویکٹر یہ تمام چیزیں ہم نے کیلکولیٹ کی تھی فار این آربیٹری سپیڈ کر اس کے بعد ہم نے دیکھا تھا کہ کوئی بھی اگر کرو گیون ہو تو ہم اس کا ایک خاص آسپیکٹ لے کے ایک اور کرو ڈیفائن کر سکتے ہیں اور جو نئی کرو بنے گی یہ کرو کی جو اریجنل کرو ہے اس کی کچھ پروپرٹیز کو ڈیپیکٹ کرے گی اور کچھ پروپرٹیز جو ہیں فار اگزمپل آپ کرویچر لے لیں وہ زیادہ آپ اس کے بیہیوئر کو اچھے طریقے سے سٹڈی کر سکتے ہیں if you define a new curve just emphasizing few aspects of the geometry of the curve so for example ہم نے spherical image define کیا تھا curve کا اور پھر یہ دیکھا تھا کہ کیسے ہم understand کر سکتے ہیں for example curvature کو اور جو unit tangent vector ہے وہ کیسے بیہیو کر رہا ہے اس کو ہم زیادہ اچھے طریقے سے انڈرسٹینڈ کر سکتے ہیں آفٹر ٹیکنگ دیس سفیریکل ایمیج آج کے لیکچر میں ہم فرینے فریم سے ریلیٹڈ سلنڈریکل ہیلکس کریں گے اور یہ دیکھیں گے کہ کیسے فرینے فریم اور اس سے ریلیٹڈ جو مشینری ہے آپ کے پاس ٹوشن کرویچر اینڈ ادر تھنگز یہ کیسے بتا سکتی ہیں کسی بھی کرو کے بارے میں سو بیسیکلی یوں سمجھ لیں ایک if and only if condition ہوگی ایک necessary and sufficient condition ہوگی ہمارے پاس کہ ہم صرف اور صرف by just looking at torsion and curvature ہم یہ بتا سکتے ہیں کہ یہ curve کس قسم کی ہوگی اور exactly اس کی form بھی بتا سکتے ہیں اس کے بعد ہم start لیں گے covariant derivative سے covariant derivative کیا ہے ان کا use کیا ہے اور ان کو compute کیسے کرنا ہے ان کی کچھ properties ان کو دیکھیں گے اور یہاں پہ ہم اپنا لیکچر ختم کریں گے آج پہ سٹارٹ لیتے ہیں جی سلنڈریکل ہیلک سے جیسے کہ میں نے پہلے بھی کہا کہ فرینے فریم میں آپ کے پاس یونٹ ٹینجن ویکٹر ہے یونٹ بائی نارمل ویکٹر ہے یونٹ نارمل ویکٹر ہے ٹوشن ہے کرویچر ہے کوئی بھی کرو گیمن ہو آپ یہ تمام چیزیں کیلکولیٹ کر سکتے ہیں اب ہم نے یہ بھی دیکھا تھا کہ کیسے یہ جو فرینے فریم ہے یا فرینے آپریٹس ہے یہ کرو کی جیومیٹری کو کیسے بتا سکتا ہے تو اب اس سیکشن میں ہم ایک اگزیمپل لے رہے ہیں پرٹیکلر اگزیمپل آف ایک کرو کی اور اس اگزیمپل اس کارڈ سلنڈریکل ہیلکس اور ہم یہ دیکھیں گے کہ بائی جسٹ لکنگ ایڈ دی ٹوشن اور کرویچر یو کین اگزیکلی ٹیل دیٹ دس ایز ای سلنڈریکل ہیلکس آپ کے پاس کرو نہیں گیون کوئی آپ کو یہ بتاتا ہے کہ میرے پاس ایک ایسی کرو ہے جس کا یہ ٹوشن ہے اور یہ کرویچر ہے تو آپ بتا سکتے ہیں کہ whether this curve is a cylindrical helix or not so start لیتے ہیں by first defining precisely what does a cylindrical helix mean a regular curve جیسا کہ ہم نے شروع میں دیکھا کہ we are just considering the regular curves وہ تمام کی تمام curves جس کے لیے r such that r prime of t is not equal to 0 So, یہ تمام کی تمام curves ہیں. This is a cylindrical helix provided that the unit tangent vector of alpha has a constant angle theta with some fixed unit vector u. So, that is t dot u is equal to cosine theta. So, this theta is fixed. So, what does it mean geometrically? So, just look at this picture. یہ جو red line ہے, this is the curve. And this is cylindrical helix because this vector u, so all of these are vector u, we have translated them. So all of these vector u's, so they have a constant fixed angle. So that's what the definition says, has a constant angle theta with some fixed unit vector u. So what is that constant angle theta? There is this angle theta. And this angle is constant. And uh, the tangent vector at any point, so let's say this is the tangent vector, 
this is the tangent vector so all of these tangent vectors so they have constant angle with this unit vector u so that's how we define uh, for example uh, this is one of the example of unit uh, so for example this is one of the example of cylindrical helix so in this case this is also true that uh, tangent at any point have constant angle with a unit vector for this case may have pass jo unit vector aega wo kuch so this may have dek sakte hai it has a constant angle with each and every unit vector unit tangent vector similarly you can uh, take uh, instead of taking this right cylinder you can also take this oblique cylinder and this oblique cylinder has a cylindrical helix on it so there are many kinds of cylindrical helices next let's say we have a unit speed curve because if we have a unit speed curve hai, we know that we can re-parameterize the curve into a unit speed curve so we will always assume that it's a unit speed curve and uh, if it's a cylindrical helix then uh, uh, consider this function h of s is equal to beta of s minus beta of 0 dot u so what does this number mean so we know that if I have a vector uh, let's say alpha and if I have a vector beta uh, then what is alpha dot beta so let's say this beta is a unit vector okay so what is alpha dot beta so let's apply the definition first so alpha dot beta is equal to norm of alpha norm of beta and cosine theta where theta is the angle between them so norm of beta is one so which means this is norm of alpha cosine theta now what is norm of alpha cosine theta so what is norm of alpha this is the length of this vector so the length of this vector is norm of alpha and uh, norm of beta is 1 because it's a unit vector so what is this expression norm of alpha cosine theta it's basically this length so the component of alpha in the direction of beta so this is theta so this is the component of alpha in the direction of beta so if I take this dot product now in H of S so and use the unit vector by definition so what does it mean it's basically the component of beta of s minus beta of 0 in the direction of u so what does it mean so let's say this is beta of 0 which is uh, in in a plane so let's say this plane is fixed and uh, why we are fixing this plane um, just to see that what is the height of uh, any point at uh, uh, value of some parameter s so beta of s minus beta of 0 is basically uh, is, is a number is a vector in fact so let's say it is this vector and uh, if you take the dot product of let's say this this vector I'm not uh, uh, mentioning any direction because it's not important in this case so a line I have a component find out karna in the direction of h so the component just like we calculated the component of alpha in the direction of beta so the component of beta of s minus beta of 0 in the direction of h will in fact give me the height of this point beta of s and this plane is fixed it is containing beta of 0 so with reference to the point beta of 0 this will give me 
the height of any point s okay so uh, let's calculate the derivative of this height function just to see that uh, how the height is increasing or decreasing or changing so height function ka hum derivative le rahe ye dekhne ke liye ki ye height kaise vary kar rahi hai so beta of 0 ka derivative hamare paas 0 aayega aur once again u ka derivative 0 so basically aapne product rule apply kiya aapke paas ye expression aa gaya so this is equal to this and what is beta prime of s so it's a unit speed curve remember और अगर ये यूनिट स्पीड का हुआ दैन बीटा प्राइम ऑफ एस इज द टेंट वैक्टर एंड वी ऑल्सो नो दैट दिस इज इक्वल टू कोसाइन थीटा सो वट इज दिस मीन सो इट मीन्स दैट द हाइट इज चेंजिंग एट ए कॉन्स्टेंट रेट बिकॉज द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ हाइट इज ए कॉन्स्टेंट नंबर सो हाइट इज इंक्रीजिंग at a constant rate so this is one of the observations now what is a good way to see a cylindrical helix and uh, the good way is to use the Frenet operators and how to use that Frenet operators so this theorem states that a regular curve alpha with curvature greater than zero and uh, remember we are ignoring the case where curvature is equal to zero because it is a straight line and it is a cylindrical helix if and only if the ratio uh, tau over n is constant so this theorem is important in a way that sabse pehli baat ye hai ki ye batata hai aapko ki how important the frenet operator is क्योंकि आपने सिर्फ और सिर्फ टॉर्शन और कर्वेचर को यूज करके तमाम की तमाम कर्व के बारे में बता दिया है कि दैट दिस इज ए सिलेंड्रिकल हीलिक्स सेकेंडली आपको एक अच्छा वे बता रहा है हाउ टू डिफाइन ए सिलेंड्रिकल हीलिक्स सो बेसिकली एक काइंड ऑफ आपने क्लासिफिकेशन कर दी है तमाम की तमाम कर्व जिनके लिए रेशियो ऑफ टॉर्शन एंड कर्वेचर इज कॉन्स्टेंट वो तमाम के तमाम हमारे पास सिलेंड्रिकल हिलसिज है सो लेट्स कंक्लूड विद दिस रिमार्क्स बेसिकली लेट्स गो बैक टू और थ्री लेक्चर्स जब हमने फ्रेने फ्रेम को डिफाइन किया उसके बाद हमने फ्रेने फार्मूलाज को डिफाइन किया उसके बाद हमने कर्वेचर और टॉर्शन डिफाइन किए थे यूनिट स्पीड कर्व्स के लिए उसके बाद हमने देखा था कि हाउ दिज दे आर इम्पॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द जोमेट्री ऑफ द कर्व नेक्स्ट Uh, we basically generalized those things to arbitrary speed curves the same formulas or humne dekha tha ki it is very easy to generalize them and it is very easy to see them or uh, but the outcome is very important outcome is very non trivial in a in a way that it will tell us the geometry of the curves in a very uh, good way so just like uh, the एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द सिलेंड्रिकल हिलिक्स जहाँ हमने ये बता दिया है कि टॉर्शन और कर्वेचर का अगर हमारे पास जो रेशो है वो कॉन्स्टेंट है दैन इट इज ए सिलेंड्रिकल हिलिक्स सो इट्स अ वेरी गुड वे ऑफ डिफाइनिंग द जोमेट्रिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द कर्व सो वट वी हैव लर्न सो फार इन टर्म्स ऑफ फ्रेने ऑपरेटर्स वट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द कर्व कैन बी इजिली अंडरस्टूड सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज इफ द कर्वेचर इज जीरो इफ एंड ऑल इफ इट्स अ स्ट्रेट लाइन so given any curve if the curvature of the curve is uh, zero then it is a straight line similarly humne ye bhi prove kiya tha ke if the torsion of the curve is zero then the curve has to be a planar curve ye ek plane ke upar lie karegi it will not be in three dimensional space so three dimensional space mein aapke paas curve hai if the torsion of the curve is zero तो थ्री डायमेंशनल प्ले स्पेस में आपके पास एक ऐसा प्लेन एग्जिस्ट करेगा जिसके अंदर वो कर्व तमाम की तमाम लाई करेगी सिमिलरली अगर हमारे पास कर्वेचर कांस्टेंट है और टॉर्शन जीरो है सो so, टॉर्शन जीरो हमने देखा है इट्स ए प्लेनर कर्व सो इट इज सम कर्व लाइंग इन ए प्लेन सेकेंडली अगर हमारे पास कर्वेचर कॉन्स्टेंट है और हमने ये देखा था कि दिस इज ओनली पॉसिबल if uh, the curve is basically part of a circle 
so basically it can be entire circle it can be some part of the circle so ye cheez bhi humne prove ki thi uske baad humne dekha ki agar curvature constant hai aur tau constant hai agar ye dono cheeze constant hai then it's a circular helix so what is a circular helix circular helix uh, basically uh, is a helix which lies on a right cylinder so it's uh, something like this so it is so lying on a circular right cylinder so if these are constant so basically we are just combining uh, the above results so if this holds then it is a circular helix aur jo last theorem humne kiya tha jiska hum proof ignore kar rahe hain ye hamare course mein nahi hai uh, agar ratio jo hai wo torsion aur curvature ki constant hai aur non zero hai kyunki agar zero hogi to aap khud se dekh sakte hain ki iska matlab hai torsion zero hoga aur agar torsion zero hai then it is a planar curve and it is not a helix so if it is non zero and constant then it is a cylindrical helix so uh, this is just a very short view of how good can this frene operators be kitne acche tarike se ye aapko geometry of the curves ke bare mein batata hai now let's start with covariant derivatives वेक्टर फील्ड की हमने डेफिनेशन की हुई है व्हाट इज अ वेक्टर फील्ड अ वेक्टर फील्ड इज अ फंक्शन व्हिच अजाइंस अ वेक्टर टू ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट ऑफ आर थ्री सो जैसा कि हम इस पिक्चर में देख सकते हैं कोरिस्पॉन्डिंग टू ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट ऑफ आर थ्री देर इज ए वैक्टर इनफैक्ट टेंज एंड वैक्टर एट दैट पॉइंट इसमें आप देख सकते हैं कि कुछ पॉइंट्स ऐसे हैं जहाँ पर आपको एरो हेड नहीं नजर आ रहे तो बेसिकली देर आर एरो हेड्स लेकिन वो जस्ट स्केच नहीं किए गए अदरवाइज इस पिक्चर को अंडरस्टैंड करना बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है सो फॉर एग्जांपल यहाँ भी एरोज हैं आपके यहाँ भी एरोज हैं आपके हर जगह पे एरोज हैं और इन अदर वर्ड्स हर पॉइंट पे एक आपके पास टेंजेंट वेक्टर आ रहा है एट दैट पॉइंट लेकिन उसको इस पिक्चर में स्केच नहीं किया गया बिकॉज इट विल बी देन वेरी हार्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड पिक्चर so we know what is a vector field we know how to uh, visualize a vector field uh, now the point is uh, we can see that ke koi arrow kisi ek direction mein ja raha hai koi arrow kisi ek direction mein ja raha hai har arrow ki apni ek direction bani hui hai but now we need to understand the behavior of these arrows or the behavior of these tangent vectors uh, not entirely but some aspect of it iska kuch part hum समझना चाह रहे हैं जितना पॉसिबल है कि इन एरोज की डायरेक्शन कैसे चेंज हो रही है और उसमें क्या फर्क आ रहा है सो so, ये बिल्कुल ऐसे ही है जैसे हमने कैलकुलस में फंक्शन लिया था वाई इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ एक्स तो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये था कि अगर एक क्वांटिटी वाई जो है वो चेंज हो रही है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स देन हाउ वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ वाई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स and then we understood these quantities and we calculated them aur iske bare mein bahut zyada rules bhi hain calculate karne ke differentiate karne ke in tamam cheezon ko humne detail mein padha because what was the main aim we want to understand the rate of change of one quantity with respect to the other quantity so whenever there is a variation we always want to understand the rate of change सो इस पिक्चर में लेट से एक वेक्टर फील्ड बना हुआ है वी वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ दिस वैक्टर फील्ड लेट से किसी भी पॉइंट पे लेट्स चूज दिस पॉइंट लेट से दिस इज द पॉइंट पी इस पॉइंट पी पे मैं ये देखना चाह रहा हूँ कि अगर मैं एक खास डायरेक्शन में मूव करूँ तो इन एरोज में क्या चेंज आएगी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैं देखना चाह रहा हूँ कि अगर मैं इस डायरेक्शन में मूव करूँ So, इस डायरेक्शन में मूव करके इन एरोज में क्या चेंज आएगी सो बेसिकली इंस्टेंटेनियस रेट ऑफ चेंज है लेकिन हमने डायरेक्शन भी दे दिया क्योंकि देर आर मैनी डायरेक्शन तो हमने एक डायरेक्शन भी दे दिया हम ये देखना चाह रहे हैं कि वट इज द रेट ऑफ चेंज इन दिस डायरेक्शन सो लेट सी हाउ टू डिफाइन दिस थिंग मैथमेटिकली एक वैक्टर फील्ड ले लेते हैं हम डब्ल्यू इन आर थ्री 
और वी पी हम लेते हैं एक टेंजन वैक्टर टू आर थ्री सो वट इज दिस वी पी लेट्स गो बैक टू द पिक्चर सो दिस वैक्टर इज वी पी सो इस इस डायरेक्शन में दिस इज द टेंजन वैक्टर टू आर थ्री एट पॉइंट पी दिस वी पी इस टेंजन वैक्टर टू आर थ्री एट पॉइंट पी इस डायरेक्शन में हम इस वैक्टर फील्ड डब्ल्यू का डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करना चाह रहे हैं एट पॉइंट पी so vp is a tangent vector to r3 at point p the covariant derivative so is derivative ko hum keh rahe hain is rate of change ko jo calculate kar rahe hain usko hum keh rahe hain covariant derivative of the vector field and this covariant derivative of w with respect to vp the tangent vector at point p is the tangent vector this okay so what is w of p plus tv now what is p plus tv so basically if you have a point in r3 and if you have a vector at point p then uh, we have seen that uh, there is a line passing through point p and parallel to the vector v so this line is unique so l is unique line so us line ki baat ho rahi hai yahan pe so p plus tv and uh, the value of the vector field at this line p iska kya matlab hai ye humne already is kisam ka concept ek dekha hua hai uh, when we calculated the vector field at a curve so for example koi si bhi x space curve hai कर्व के हर पॉइंट पे मेरे पास अगर एक वेक्टर हो उसकी एक पर्टिकुलर एग्जांपल आप ले सकते हैं टेंजेंट वेक्टर फील्ड सो यूनिट टेंजेंट वेक्टर फील्ड व्हाट इज यूनिट टेंजेंट वेक्टर फील्ड इट इज अ वेक्टर फील्ड इट विल गिव मी ए वेक्टर एट ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट बट नॉट टू आर थ्री टू ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट ऑफ द कर्व सो कर्व के हर पॉइंट पे मेरे पास एक वेक्टर आ रहा सो दैट्स वाई दिस इज ए वेक्टर फील्ड एट द पॉइंट एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ द कर्व सो कर्व के हर पॉइंट पे एक टेंजेंट वेक्टर आ रहा है दैट्स वाई दिस इज कॉल्ड टेंजेंट वेक्टर फील्ड एट द कर्व सो कर्व के हर पॉइंट पे एक वेक्टर है नाउ वट इज डब्ल्यू ऑफ पी प्लस टी this means that we have uh, restricted the vector field to basically this line so for example we will have vector field like this so the vectors could be very changing isme ho sakta bahut zyada change aa rahi ho har point pe vectors mein so this is w on this line लाइन के हर पॉइंट पे एक वेक्टर है विच इज टेंजेंट वेक्टर टू आर थ्री एट द पॉइंट्स ऑफ द लाइन उसका हमने डेरिवेटिव लेना है अपने नो व्हाट इज डब्ल्यू ऑफ पी प्लस टीवी ये हमने बता दिया उसका डेरिवेटिव लेंगे इट इज ए वेक्टर फील्ड एंड वी नो हाउ टू टेक डेरिवेटिव ऑफ ए वैक्टर फील्ड हमने ये देखा था कि कोई सा भी हमारे पास अगर वेक्टर फील्ड है W, देन वी कैन राइट इट डाउन एज डब्ल्यू वन यू वन प्लस डब्ल्यू टू यू टू प्लस डब्ल्यू थ्री यू थ्री सो ये जो कंपोनेंट्स हैं दीज आर रियल वैल्यूड फंक्शन ऑन आर थ्री सो ऑल ऑफ दीज डब्ल्यू आईज आर फंक्शन फ्रॉम आर थ्री टू आर एंड देन वट इज डब्ल्यू प्राइम सो डब्ल्यू प्राइम इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू वन प्राइम यू वन प्लस डब्ल्यू टू प्राइम U2 टू प्लस डब्ल्यू थ्री प्राइम यू थ्री और ये जो प्राइम्स हैं दे आर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द वेरिएबल ऑफ द कर्व सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इट इज़ ए लाइन देन इन दिस केस हमारे पास जो वेरिएबल है वो T है सो इट विल बी ए फंक्शन ऑफ T. सो बेसिकली इस केस में हम डेरिवेटिव ले रहे होंगे विद रिस्पेक्ट टू T. सो दिस इज द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ W1 वन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू T. डेरिवेटिव ऑफ W2 टू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू T. एंड डेरिवेटिव ऑफ W3 थ्री विद रिस्पेक्ट टू T. उसके बाद आप इसको इवेल्यूएट कर लेंगे एट पॉइंट जीरो और जब आप टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो पुट करेंगे तो बेसिकली आपके पास क्या आ जाएगा रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ 
this vector field at point P because you will equal to 0 put at the end so T is equal to 0 put so this will be rate of change at point P but in the direction of V okay so uh, what is this uh, notation so this notation or this symbol is called nebula so it's a very old word it's a very ancient word or its original meaning hai, uh, literal meaning hai, uska ye harp hai, ye musical instrument hai, harp so ye is ki picture aapko nazar aa rahi hai. so uh, this is called nebula so as we have discussed uh, this uh, de covariant derivative of the vector field in the direction of V at point P measures the initial rate of change of W of P as P moves in the direction of V so what is W of P so as we have discussed that uh, a vector field is a function that assigns a vector to each and every point so W of P is this uh, vector so this is W of P and this is W vector field so this is W of P and uh, if we move in the direction of V if we move in this direction then it will give me the covariant derivative will give me uh, the rate of change okay Jesse hum uh, P say is direction V may move going to rate of change kya hoga is vector field ka so that's the definition now uh, one may ask ke hum is kism ki cheezen kyun define kar sakte hain so one of the very important application of this is to understand the weather aapka jo mausam hai usko aap understand kar sakte hain using covariant derivative so for example uh, weather mein bohut saari cheezen aati hain so un cheezon mein hum sirf aur sirf uh, discuss kar rahe hain let's say wind ko aap temperature bhi discuss kar sakte hain aap aur cheezen bhi discuss kar sakte hain sunlight bhi discuss kar sakte hain so we are at the moment taking the wind ko. so wind is a vector field uh, because uh, at any point you have not only wind ki direction but its speed and its speed that the wind is blowing and running is also important hai. so basically at any point of uh, the space we can have a vector uska jo uh, direction hai wo bata rahi hai ki wind kis direction mein move karegi aur uski jo length hai wo uski speed bata rahi hai so we have vectors at each and every point of the space and uh, then by definition this is a vector field and we can call it wind vector field because it is giving me uh, a vector at each and every point of the space now of course uh, if we have this uh, wind vector field then it is very crucial uh, both uh, important hai humare liye hum ye jane ki ye kis speed se agar kisi ek direction mein let's say ye ek point hai aur ye is direction mein uh, iska rate of change kya hoga aur ye kyun hum kar rahe hain kyunki agar ye rate of change zyada hai to hum ye pata chal jayega ki ye kis direction mein ab move karegi so agar rate of change is direction mein zyada hai to hame phir andaza ho jayega ki ab ye is direction mein wind ye tamam ka tamam jo circle hai ye is direction mein move karega aur phir hum ye bhi dekhna chahte hain ki is kisi ek aur point pe is direction mein kya rate of change hai similarly the rates of change of this vector field at a point in a certain direction they are important to understand the behavior of the wind and of course eventually to understand the weather and uh, we do it by calculating the covariant derivative of this wind vector field uh, in general our puri jo planet earth hai usme ye vector field define kar sakte hain the wind vector field aur uh, aapko har ek point pe ek vector milega jiski jo direction hai wo wind ki direction bata rahi hai aur uski jo length hai vector ki wo aapko speed bata rahi hai wind ki so this is the wind vector field and this is very important that we can calculate in any point in a direction the rate of change 
and it will give us how the wind is going to change in that certain direction. Now how to calculate this uh, rate of change? So we have seen that if W is a vector field or we have already seen that we can write vector field in terms of natural frame field natural frame field is u1, u2 and u3 is the component of u3 zero hai. so ko, koi bhi vector field hum usko is way mein lik sakte hain ab humne calculate karna what is the covariant derivative of this vector field at point p in the direction of v so agar hum definition dekhe so let's write down the definition first so it's basically p plus t v prime at zero so ye cheez hum calculate karni hai so let's first calculate p plus tv so p plus tv is equal to so p is 2 1 0 plus t and v is minus 1 0 2 and uh, so this is equal to 2 minus t 1 and 2 t this and uh, now this is uh, p plus tv now what is the W of P plus T V? So basically you have to calculate karna hai vector field ko at the points of the line. Or points of the line kiss form ke is jo x coordinator 2 minus t hai, is ka jo y coordinator 1 hai, is ka jo z coordinator 2t hai, where t is the parameter. So basically we can see that uh, this is the point P, this is the vector V and then this line is basically each and every point or let's say an arbitrary point of the line is 2 minus T1, 2T and if we have a point we have found a vector field W ki value find out then what do we do? In x ki jaga 2 minus T, y ki jaga 1 or z ki jaga 2T put kar denge. So this is basically equal to 2 minus t square u1 plus y is 1 and z is 2t and u2. So this is basically equal to 2 minus t square u1 plus 2t u2. So this is w of p plus tv value of the vector field at points of the line. And t is the parameter. जैसे जैसे t की value change करेंगे, आपके पास points on the line आते चले जाएंगे. t की value one रखेंगे, तो आपके पास जो t is equal to one के corresponding point है line के ऊपर, उसके ऊपर आपकी vector field की value आएगी. t is equal to zero लेंगे, तो आपके पास जो point P है, उसके ऊपर जो vector field की value है W की, वो आ जाएगी. Up to so on line k points ke upar that's how we calculate the value of the vector field ab humne iska derivative lena hai jaisa ki humne pehle bhi dekha tha ki iska kaise derivative lete hain basically iske x component ka derivative le le with respect to t kyunki t is the variable now so 2 2 minus t into minus 1 u1 plus 2 u2 t ka derivative 1 और माइनस टी का डेरिवेटिव माइनस वन यहाँ आ गया हमारे पास नाउ व्हाट इज पी प्लस टी वी प्राइम इन ए सिंपल वे दिस इज माइनस टू टू माइनस टी यू वन प्लस टू यू टू नाउ बाय डेफिनेशन ऑफ द कोवेरिएंट डेरिवेटिव वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट दिस एक्सप्रेशन सो लेट्स पुट t is equal to 0 in this expression so agar mein t is equal to 0 yaan pe put kar dhoon to mere paas minus 4 a jayega u1 vaise hi aur is mein t ka koi part nahi hai so this is 2 u2 so this is the covariant derivative of the vector field w at point p in the direction of v in other words एक हमारे पास वेक्टर फील्ड गिवन है हमने एक पॉइंट चूज किया पी 
ہم ایک خاص ڈائریکشن میں یہ دیکھنا چاہ رہے ہیں کہ اس ڈائریکشن میں جو ویکٹر فیلڈ ہے اس میں کیا چینج آ رہی ہے لیکن انسٹنٹینیس چینج ہے اور ان ادر ورڈز آپ پوائنٹ پی کے اوپر سٹینڈ کر رہے ہیں اور یہاں سے ہم ایک خاص ڈائریکشن میں دیکھتے ہیں اور پھر یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ ہمیں یہ جو ایروز ہیں یہ کیسے نظر آ رہے ہیں کیسے چینج ہو رہے ہیں سو وی آر ناٹ موونگ وی آر جسٹ اسٹینڈنگ ایٹ دا پوائنٹ پی اینڈ وی آر جسٹ لوکنگ ان دس ڈائریکشن اور پھر ہم یہ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ ایروز کیسے چینج ہو رہے ہیں اینڈ دس از دا ریٹ آف چینج اور دا کوویرین ڈیریویٹو نا دس از ون ایشو اگر ویکٹر فیلڈ گیون ہو تو اٹ از آلموسٹ امپاسبل کہ میں آر تھری کے ہر ایک پوائنٹ کے اوپر اور ہر ایک ڈائریکشن میں یہ ڈیریویٹو کیلکولیٹ کروں سو دس از پریکٹیکلی ناٹ پاسبل سو دیر شوڈ بی اے سمپل وے آف کیلکولیٹنگ اٹ سو اس کے لیے ہم دیکھتے ہیں یوکلیڈین کوآڈینیٹ ریپرزینٹیشن آف دا کوویرین ڈیریویٹو سو نیبلا ڈبلو ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وی اس کو ہم لکھ سکتے ہیں وی ایف ڈبلو آئی یو آئی ایف پی نو وٹ از وی ایف ڈبلو آئی سو سب سے پہلی بات تو یہ ہے کہ اگر ویکٹر فیلڈ ڈبلو گیون ہے ایز ڈبلو آئی یو آئی ہم نے پہلے بھی دیکھا تھا دیز ڈبلو آئیز آر فنکشنز فرام آر تھری ٹو آر اور اگر یہ فنکشنز ہیں فرام آر تھری ٹو آر دیز آر ریئل ویلیوڈ فنکشنز آن آر تھری دین وی کین کیلکولیٹ دی ڈائریکشنل ڈیریویٹوز آف دیز ڈبلو آئیز سو اگر ہم ان کا ڈائریکشنل ڈیریویٹو کیلکولیٹ کریں ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وی تو ہمارے پاس یہ ایکسپریشن ہے وی آف ڈبلو آئی اور دی ڈائریکشنل ڈیریویٹو آف ڈبلو آئی ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وی ایٹ پوائنٹ پی اور یو آئی ایف پی یہ ہمیں پتہ ہے دس از نیچرل فریم فیلڈ لیٹ می ریمائنڈ یو کہ اگر کسی بھی ایک پوائنٹ پی پہ ہم سٹینڈ کر رہے ہیں وٹ از نیچرل فریم فیلڈ اٹ از اے فریم فیلڈ وچ ول گیو می اے یونٹ ویکٹر ایٹ پوائنٹ پی پیرل ٹو ایکس ایکسس اینڈ یو ٹو ایف پی از اے یونٹ ویکٹر ایٹ پوائنٹ پی ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وائی ایکسس اینڈ سملرلی یو تھری ایف پی از اے یونٹ ویکٹر ایٹ پوائنٹ پی ان دی ڈائریکشن آف زیڈ سو ہم کسی بھی پوائنٹ پی پہ اور کسی بھی ڈائریکشن وی میں لیٹ سے دس از دی ڈائریکشن وی دین وی وانٹ ٹو کیلکولیٹ دی وی وانٹ ٹو کیلکولیٹ دی ڈیریویٹو آف دس ویکٹر فیلڈ ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وی ایٹ پوائنٹ پی سو دس براؤن لائن از دی لائن پی پلس ٹی وی لائن پاسنگ تھرو پوائنٹ پی اینڈ پیرل ٹو دا ویکٹر وی ناؤ لیٹ سی ہمارے پاس ایک ویکٹر فیلڈ ہے ڈبلیو دیر آر ایروز ایوری ویئر سو کورسپونڈنگ ٹو ایچ اینڈ ایوری پوائنٹ دیر از اے ویکٹر اینڈ سملرلی لائن کے بھی ہر پوائنٹ پہ اینڈ دس از دا ویکٹر فیلڈ ڈبلیو سو دس اسٹیٹمنٹ سیز دیٹ دی ریٹ آف چینج آف ڈبلیو ایٹ پوائنٹ پی ان دی ڈائریکشن آف وی کین آلسو بی ریٹرن ایز دی ڈائریکشنل ڈیریویٹو آف ایچ اینڈ ایوری کمپوننٹ ان ٹو یو آئی سو لیٹ سی ہاؤ ٹو پروو دس سو اسٹارٹنگ فرام دا ڈیفینیشن وی نو دیٹ نیبلا ڈبلیو وی از بیسیکلی ڈبلیو پی پلس ٹی وی پرائم زیرو Now what is W? W is W I U I and uh, we want to calculate this vector field at the points of this line. So let's uh, first calculate uh, W of P plus T V. And iska kya matlab hai? We want to calculate the values of each and every w i at p plus t v so i is 1 to 3 because we are in r 3 and u i of 
P plus T V. Now this is basically the precise definition. लेकिन हम यहाँ में इस चीज को इग्नोर कर सकते हैं इस एक्सप्रेशन को बिकॉज दिस इज अंडरस्टूड के वी आर स्टैंडिंग एट द पॉइंट पी प्लस टी वी एंड ऑर्बिटरी पॉइंट ऑफ द लाइन सो वी कैन राइट इट डाउन एज डब्ल्यू आई पी प्लस टी वी आई इज वन टू थ्री एंड यू आई नो दिस इज डब्ल्यू ऑफ पी प्लस टी वी नो वट इज डब्ल्यू ऑफ पी प्लस टी वी प्राइम so we are differentiating the vector field and uh, we have seen that how to differentiate a vector field uh, we basically uh, take derivatives of each and every component uh, and now this component is a function of t only so we take derivative with respect to t and ui now if we remember the definition of the directional derivative so w1 let's just consider w1 it's a function from r3 to r and uh, the directional derivative of this w1 in the direction of uh, uh, v at point p this is basically d w1 p plus t v by t and at point t is equal to zero, so that's the definition of the directional derivative. Or uh, so by this definition, we can easily see that. Uh, so this implies w p plus t v prime is equal to uh, d w i p plus t v. Uh, by dt i is varies from 1 to 3 u i u i at point t is equal to 0 now when we take t is equal to 0 then uh, we will take t is equal to 0 for each and every expression so basically we will take t is equal to 0 in each and every of this expression or agar hum t is equal to 0 in this expression mein, then by this definition of uh, directional derivative aapke paas by this definition aapke paas ye directional derivative ban jayega wi ka in the direction of v at point p so which is exactly the statement so that's how we calculate in a, a simple way agar ek vector field humare paas given hai एक पॉइंट गिवन है और एक वेक्टर गिवन है जिस डायरेक्शन में हमने ये डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करना है तो हम इजीली कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं बाय मेकिंग यूज ऑफ द डायरेक्शनल डेरिवेटिव सो बेसिकली हमने डिफाइन कर दिया है कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव को इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डायरेक्शनल डेरिवेटिव विच इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग एंड वाई दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज वी अंडरस्टैंड डायरेक्शनल डेरिवेटिव we know there are many properties of directional derivative and we can use those properties to simplify the calculations of the covariant derivative so some properties of the covariant derivative uh, let's say u and w be tangent vectors to r3 at point p and y and z be vector fields on r3 then for numbers a b and functions f then we can write down the following properties so nebula a v plus b w of y is the same as a into nebula v y plus b into nebula y w so basically we can calculate uh, the covariant derivative of a vector field at a point p in the direction of a v plus b w and this is just this combination a into this expression b into this expression so this is very important uh, because if you have a vector v and a vector w and if we take a linear combination of uh, v and w or in other words there is uh, some vector a v plus b w uh, then if we just understand 
if we just understand two expressions and what are the two expressions that nebula y v and nebula y w if we just understand these two expressions then we can calculate the covariant derivative in the direction a v plus b w which is basically uh, a linear combination of v and w so any vector in the plane so basically it is any vector in the plane ye just koi bhi linear combination le le so this is another linear combination a prime v plus uh, b prime w and similarly any vector in the plane can be written as a linear combination of v and w so v and w are non collinear then any vector in plane can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors and we just need to calculate these two expressions and after that we can calculate the covariant derivative of the vector field in any direction by just taking the linear combination of these two quantities and a and b are the same as these a and b so this is an important consequence by using uh, the properties of the directional derivatives and similarly other properties are important in calculating the covariant derivative so uh, let's uh, try to prove the first property so what is nebula y av plus pw so we have seen that by this uh, corollary which uh, basically related the covariant derivative and the directional derivative so this is equal to so basically the directional derivative of y i in the direction of av plus b w and u i and uh, where y is basically y i u i so we have seen that so this is just a recall so a v plus p w of some real valued function so the directional derivative in the direction of a v plus p w is the same as a the directional derivative of y i in the direction of v plus b the directional derivative of y i in the direction of w so by using this property we can uh, say that uh, so the expression 1 becomes so 1 becomes so nebula of y a v plus b w this is uh, equal to sum a v y i plus b w y i into u i so this can be easily written as v y i u i plus uh, b uh, w y i u i so this is equal to a now what is this expression so this expression is basically by using the same uh, lemma this is basically the covariant derivative of y in the direction of v at point p so this is nebula y at v plus b into nebula y at w so if we know this uh, corresponding to these two vectors v and w if we know these two numbers then we can calculate the covariant derivative in any direction which is a linear combination of v and w and if v and w if we take them to be non-collinear so they will span the whole plane and then we can calculate the covariant derivative in any direction in that plane so this is an important property similarly we can prove the other properties and uh, we will be using uh, the properties of the directional derivatives so for example how to prove the second property so by definition once again uh, a y plus b z so this is equal to so let's say y is uh, y i 
ui and uh, z is basically zi ui then uh, this is basically nebula v a y i u i plus b z i u i and which is equal to nebula v a y i plus b z i with u i and the summation sign so this is equal to by definition so this is basically uh, sum the directional derivative of uh, a y i plus b z i in the direction of v u i so this is once again we are using the lemma and uh, this is equal to so this is the another property of the directional derivative that uh, so this is a recall so v the directional derivative of a v, y i plus b z i in the direction of uh, v is basically equal to uh, a the directional derivative of y in the direction of v plus b into directional derivative of z i in the direction of v so this is just basically a so after some computation you can see that this is just equal to u i plus b the directional derivative of z i in the direction of v u i and so this is just equal to a nebula y in the direction of v plus b nebula z in the direction of v so the second property is proved and once again we use the properties of the directional derivatives to gain this property and similarly we can prove the third property and uh, I am leaving this as an exercise and also the fourth property I am also leaving this as an exercise so as a hint I can say that uh, uh, a proof is given in the book so you can see so this is just a hint to understand the proof proof is given in book so jo first or second part hai aur third part hai unka proof nahi given third part simple hai ye aap log kar sakte hain aur jo fourth part hai iska proof book mein given hai now we can calculate the covariant derivative of a vector field in any direction now agar main ek aisa vector field define kar dun जो कि मुझे वो तमाम की तमाम डायरेक्शंस दें सो फॉर एग्जांपल, लेट से हमने जो वेक्टर फील्ड डब्ल्यू है उसका कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करना और बेसिकली हम एक स्पेस में हैं सो so, इस स्पेस में मैं हर पॉइंट पे एक कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करना चाह रहा हूँ और इन अदर वर्ड्स किसी भी पॉइंट ये लेट से मेरे पास पॉइंट्स हैं स्पेस के P1, P2, P3. So corresponding to every point. So just I have four points choose. Kar diye. So corresponding to every point and in any direction, I want to calculate the covariant derivative. So what does it mean? Har point pe mujhe covariant derivative chahiye in some direction. सो so, हर पॉइंट पे मेरे पास एक वेक्टर है और ये वेक्टर क्या बता रहा है इस वेक्टर मुझे डायरेक्शन और मैग्नीट्यूड बता रहा है कि जिस डायरेक्शन में मैंने कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव कैलकुलेट करना है बाय डेफिनेशन दिस इज इट सेल्फ एन अदर वेक्टर फील्ड और ये कौन सा वेक्टर फील्ड है जो मुझे डायरेक्शन बता रहा है हर पॉइंट पे कि किस डायरेक्शन में आपने कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव कैलकुलेट करना है सो इट्स ए वेक्टर फील्ड इट सेल्फ सो इसका क्या मतलब हुआ अगर मेरे पास कोई से दो वेक्टर फील्ड्स हैं और अगर मैंने W का कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करना है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू V, तो इसका मतलब है मैं क्या करूँगा W का कोवेरियन डेरिवेटिव फाइंड आउट करूँगा एट ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट 
in what direction? In the direction of V of P1, let's say at P1. Or P2 pe V of P2. Kyunke V is a vector field. So it will give me a vector at each and every point of the space. So similarly, P3 me may find out karunga kis direction me V of P3. P4 pe mene W ka covariant derivative find out karna, but in what direction? In the direction of V of P4. So a vector field hame directions bata raha ke kis direction me calculate karna covariant derivative or dusra vector field hame bata raha ke kis vector field ka hamne covariant derivative lena hai. Then now the covariant derivative uh, nebula W V. Now in this case capital W is a vector field and capital V is a vector field of W with respect to V is a vector field defined by this. Now we also know that uh, what is covariant derivative at any point in any direction it is a tangent vector Ye itself a tangent vector there or agar mein W which is a vector field uska covariant derivative calculate karu in the directions given by the vector field V it will give me another vector field and we call it let's say the covariant derivative vector field. So the covariant derivative vector field is a vector field which will give me nebula V of P W which is the covariant derivative of W in the direction of V and P at each and every point of the space. Now this is uh, uh, this corollary is very easy consequence of the theorem and uh, I'm uh, leaving this as an exercise the proof of this corollary. This is basically uh, giving me the vector field of uh, the covariant derivatives of uh, W with respect to the vector field V which is given in this way. So uh, if, if I want to calculate its value at any point P then uh, I just may pe V of P kar dunga so mere paas ek vector a jayega aur iska directional derivative lunga WI ka in the direction of V and V of P or U of UI of P a jayega. So let's uh, calculate the directional derivatives uh, of W in the direction of the vector field V so let's say mere paas w ye vector field given hai aur v jo hai ek aur vector field hai jo mujhe directions dega ki kis direction mein maine vector field ka derivative calculate karna hai aur in other words kis direction mein maine covariant derivative of w find out karna then uh, basically by using this corollary so uh, by using this corollary uh, this is just v of wi so what is uh, the W1? So this is x, y, u1 plus v of the coefficient of uh, u2 in W is 0. So there is no term plus v of e raised to power z and u3. So this is by this corollary nebula W capital V which is the uh, directional derivative uh, vector field or in other words which is giving me the directional derivatives of W in the direction of the vector field V. And uh, we know that how to calculate uh, V of x, y. So uh, let's just consider V of x, y. So we know that what is V? So V is just uh, z u1 plus x minus y u2 or isko humne evaluate karna hai at uh, x y so x y pe evaluate karenge then it will be evaluated at z u1 of x y plus x minus y u2 of x y so isko aap distribute kar de x minus y ko in ke upar and now what is u1 of x y so u1 of x y is basically so basically uh, what is this we are basically calculating 
the directional derivative of x y with respect to this vector field so u1 is a vector field it will give me a unit vector at each and every point parallel to x axis and if I want to calculate the directional derivative of x y with respect to this vector field so we already key here this is just equal to partial x y by partial x so with respect to x up laying it because this is one similarly agar ye two hai to with respect to y derivative lenge aur with respect to x derivative kya banega ji this is just y to yahan pe hamare paas y aa gaya with respect to y agar derivative lenge x y ka to x aa jayega aur ye hamare paas x aa gaya aur baki cheeze as it is similarly we can calculate v of e raised to power z and uh, after that in tamam values ko aap idhar put kar de v of x y v of e raised to power z in values ko yahan put kar de aapke paas ye expression aa jayega and this is basically a vector field aap dekh sakte hain this is also a function with a coefficient u1 aur u2 aur u3 ke jo coefficients hain wo zero hain so this is an other vector field which is the vector field of the covariant derivatives of w in the directions given by the vector field v so there are many uh, questions in the exercise so it's a relatively difficult concept to grasp so main ye advise karunga aapko ki aap exercises ke questions kare assignment mein bhi questions honge isse related to in tamam ko aap acche tarike se try kare then you will be able to understand this in a more good way and then we have uh, this uh, corollary which are uh, some other properties of this covariant derivative and uh, these are easy to uh, prove and i am once again leaving this as an exercise because they are very easy to prove and uh, just use the properties of uh, use properties which we have already done of uh, let's say directional derivative and other properties jo ke humne ki hain so what we have learned today so first we learned that uh, what is a cylindrical helix and how the frenier operators can be used to exactly give a equivalent characterization which is easy to remember and which is easy to compute so koi bhi curve given ho aap uh, tau aur kappa calculate kare and then you can say exactly if it's a cylindrical helix or not and then we calculated the covariant derivatives and uh, we have seen that uh, um uh, one of the important applications how we can understand the weather if we understand what is covariant derivative and uh, then we calculated uh, some easy ways of uh, the calculations and some properties which are basically given by the properties of the directional derivatives because we can relate uh, the directional derivative and the covariant derivatives and then at the end we defined Uh, a vector field which is given by the covariant derivative of a vector field w in the directions given by the vector field v next time we will be studying frame fields this is the end of the lecture thank you very much allah hafiz